I get this one. And I couldn't believe it. But it says it up on that side, and you can pick it up. It said, the soldier's actually dead. <gasps> oh, he had my died. God. <laughs> he died two days previously. Oh, and dear. there were quite a number of deaths at oh, the training God. camp because there were outbreaks of measles and influenza. So yes. somebody had been weakened by the measles and they got the flu, a number of men died before mm. they ever went to war. And this is one of those. And these blokes knew that they were going to score a, a posse in this picture. They'd planned it all. So they put him in his uniform before they took him off and buried him after the picture. Oh. Put him in his uniform. And you can see they're holding him up by his epaulets. Oh. He's dead. He's dead. But they got him in the picture. They said, oh, what is that? They want to be in the picture. And he's, dead. And he's in the a, picture. Such a mate's thing. Yeah. Such an Aussie it's mate's such thing. such a larrikin. <laughs> but is. now, while we laugh, yeah. I mean, even that, yeah. you've got to laugh. I yes. mean, but the other point, you look at these... All of these men, young men yes. all of these men, 80% yes, so of them, that includes the father and the three sons, 80% died on the first day of landing. 80% of everybody in that photograph. And that's why that war is so, that photograph. so horrific, it's such a horrific war. Oh God, I do carry on, enough of that. <laughs> now moving on devastating. To, to territory, which again starts with Darwin in, in the Second mm. World War. Now, and you'll finish it with Cyclone Tracy, so two really devastating experiences for Darwin. Now, when you just, what made you want to decide to write that? Was it again the interest in the that Second was, World that, War? You, you just actually said it, Denise. Yes. You've said it. Uh, that was the history of the town itself. Mm. Uh, that really uh, was from the bombing of Darwin to uh, only just over 30 years later, 32 mm. years later, uh, the annihilation of it um, uh, 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 with, the, uh, with Cyclone Tracy. Um, I mean, how often is a is a city? Uh, does that happen to a city? It's like two bookends, so the city isn't itself, it? it's like two yeah. bookends to the, to yeah. the city. I yeah. was going to that again, a bit like Cal. I was going to take that through to the East Timor, you know, the gateway to the north and the East Timor crisis and everything, and 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 have another generation and bring it forward. But again, I just thought, no, no, that the history of Darwin dictated mm. the end of that book. And it really is like a, a, a bookend, isn't it, to the mm. story? To yeah. very devastating experiences that yes. they've come through and of course now they're a thriving city but yes yeah, absolutely yeah. and and the spirit of the people mm. that just well we, we we'll stay we'll re rebuild we'll, oh, you know. absolutely mm. now pacific now i liked how i read that this actually came from a wardrobe yeah. you wrote a short story about a wardrobe in a house that you bought in sydney a little terrace house mm. so tell the audience about that because i found that quite fascinating that you wrote a short story from an inspiration you got from a wardrobe, yeah. which then years later developed into into a novel. I just find that quite an interesting journey for a writer, going back to mm. something and then um, building on it. So yeah, tell I, us a little bit about that. Well, I, th I think without a doubt, it is the most intriguing uh, inspiration. Mm. Uh, the, the story of it is the most intriguing uh, of the lot. It was in uh, mid-70s. I was doing that risque show called The Box. <laughs> and uh, it was the first time I'd, I'd earned any really good regular money. Um, and I actually had enough to put a deposit on a house, and not a very good house. It was a, a, a really rat bag, run down little inner city terrace house in Surrey Hills in Sydney. And uh, it was a deceased estate. An old lady had owned it and had died recently, an elderly woman. And uh, there was a lot of uh, old furniture left in it, bits and pieces and everything. And one of them was a wardrobe. And it was a cheap old sort of pine type wardrobe. And I opened it up and inside was this whole history of mm this woman. Um, I mean, there was, there were, there was sort of like uh, uh, hand crocheted hot water bottle covers, you know, a pink and a blue, him and a her. There was, not, uh, uh, there was a man's dressing room, you know, the old, uh, dressing gown, the old old fashioned wool type with the, the woven silk tassel oh, yes. and in the, the wool checks, you know. You could just see your grandpa. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and absolutely in pristine mm. condition, all beautiful, all the, uh, sort of those grey army, cheap army blankets, but all beautifully laundered, pristine, folded up, you know. And lots of things. There was also there was a, 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 a tin that had um, papers in it, and one was uh, his um, his army discharge papers oh. from World War One. There was a letter from oh the fair fair sky or fair star whatever some P and O line announcing that his fiance was due to uh, uh, was a, a, a shock in 19 February the 7th or whatever 1929 mm. so after the war he'd been repatriated after the war and had come home and saved and they'd written and everything and about 10 years later she'd come out to join and this him this was all in the wardrobe uh, this was all in the wardrobe wow. and there were so many and there was a little christening photo uh, of a kid in a little christening gown uh, uh, two sorry no, I made, I made up the christening gown. Back, back in the picture, it, it was two little boys. 
uh, one about two years older. Mm -hmm. I made up the christening photo. That's from my book. But there was this, and I, I saved the silver frame, actually. Uh, it wasn't good for silver. It, yes. was, it was just your cheap stuff. But all of this was there, and I rang the real estate agent, and I said, look, there is a lot of personal data uh, in this wardrobe. Mm. Uh, I, I think the previous owners, I said, the, the, the lady had sons. I've got a picture here of mm. two boys. Oh, that was the most poignant thing of the lot. Inside the wardrobe door, and as I said, it was a cheap wardrobe, a sort of a soft pine thing. Yes, yes. And was the, the she'd written in, in biro or some sort of hard pencil or something. You couldn't actually even see the ink or the pencil or anything, but you could see the indentation quite clearly. And it was the names and the dates of births of the two boys. Oh, and then a little history of the family. Absolutely. Mm. And then there was, uh, it was something like a December, um, something or other, 1948, my darling George died. Ah. That was the death of the husband. Now, I bought that house in 1975, mm -hmm. so the old lady had been living there mm -hmm. since the death of the husband in 1948. Um, and I rang the real estate agent and I said, look, you must get the sons to come around and collect. I said, there's some, some really, you know, uh, family, family mementos. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And you know what, what he said? He said, um, the sons have sent their wives along. They've taken whatever they want. Uh, you can throw out the rest of the junk. Oh. Oh. Yeah. Did you feel awful. like? Did you feel that you wanted to then somehow um, remember this for that per for that person? Uh, Is that I, what inspired you, or not? No, really? I, no, no. Just no. the writer in me was yes. inspired. No, I, I thought it was sad, and I thought mm. it was a rotten reflection on a on absolutely. a couple of bastard families. Yeah, actually. Absolutely. Um, <laughs> and anyway, I, yeah, because there was also even things like there was his uh, as well as his army discharge paper. There was his pay. There was his fortnightly pay book. Something like three pound two and oh. halfpenny or something a fortnight oh, from the army. Yeah. Yes. Anyway, I gave the the, 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 the written stuff to the um, to the uh, 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 museum uh, to the library to the Mitchell Library, and uh, they looked after it for me and took oh, it and did whatever needed to be done with it. And I kept the little silver frame, which was absolutely worthless. Mm. Uh, I mean, it was a real cheapo. It's since long since fallen apart. But that was my little memento. I didn't mm. keep the picture of the boys. That went to the Mitchell <laughs> Library too. Um, but uh, it inspired me to write the story mm. about, about uh, a, you know, a young person like me at the time buying an old house and discovering. So I made the, up the story of the woman. I'd asked around the neighbourhood and nobody really knew her. She had okay. her paper delivered and she yes. kept us a nice old lady. So I made up the story during the war years of what mm. this young woman coming out to join her Australian husband and what she'd gone through. And, and it was published in a, in, a, in a book of short stories by Australian writers. So anyway, it's making a long story, isn't it? But uh, finally, I, I was going to write my next, you know, major novel. novel. And I suddenly thought, what would happen? I thought of the wardrobe, and I was always very, very proud of that short story. And I thought, I, I wondered, what would happen if, say, somebody bought a house, and instead of it just being a wardrobe inside that house that displayed a past, it's the first time I've ever done anything supernatural. And I had the house itself um, actually um, gives of its past to this person. Mm -hmm. And this person, it, the house not only um, uh, uh, not only do you discover the past of this house, vaguely, basically really through the spirits that inhabit it. I don't go too la-la with it. You wonder what she's... But basically the house dictates the future, the destiny of that young woman who's bought the house. Mm. So it, it, it uh, yeah, and it went through two different storylines. One that goes back to uh, the war, Second War years, uh, mm. Second World War years in the South Pacific with the American being, uh, you know, in, in the New Hebrides, the American bases in the New Hebrides. And she is a young actress and she's bought this house in London. And she's actually in Vanuatu, which of course was once the New Hebrides, shooting a film that is based around World War II, a little bit like, you know, Pearl Harbor was sort of yes, thing, you know? Yeah. Um, and so you get these two worlds sort of colliding. So the whole book has a sort of slightly supernatural thing to it. And it's the house that is dictating all mm. of this. And one thing that's very interesting about your books, they are fiction, of course, but it does incorporate so much history mm. of our country, yeah. which I think, which is one of the reasons why I think they're great books, because you are centering them in Australia with um, monumental things that have happened in our country and weaving them into a great storyline. Now, was that deliberate or did you, did you want to do that or it was just as a writer you thought, oh, that's a good story, I want to write that? Or was you mindful that you wanted to write about Australia predominantly? Um, I think I think I discovered that uh, in in that sort of you know mind changing book of Aralewan. Mm. Um, 
uh, that was when I sort of realised that I really did want to write about this country. Mm. Um, and then, of course, I mean, Cal just solidified that. I mean, that just, I thought, right, you know, and then off I went. So, yes, I, I do, I, Pacific, funnily enough, is the only one that basically mm, is, a, very little of it is mm. based in Australia, but she is a very Australian character. Mm. Uh, so the essence of it is still, still quite Australian. Um, but that's the only one, and all the others have been based in Australia. And, and uh, yeah, I don't see myself changing. They're very, very different books. Mm. Um, I, I'm, obviously, I've got a style that, that I've made my own, and that fortunately people pe pe <laughs> people with are. Like. Yes, yes. And, and also the reaction I've had, Denise, is exactly as you said, that uh, I am finding that it is that mixture of, of, of fact and fiction mm. that is engaging people. So, obviously, the books that I like to write are the books that obviously many people like to read, which suits me fine because they're the sort of books I like. <laughs> I like. I like to write. And a lot of the storylines that you that you've written about, people have lived through part of that, haven't they? Mm. Like as I said, the Second World War, the Snowy Mountains, Cyclone Tracy, and different things. So there's a there's a very much identifying with the area, and a lot of novels are always set overseas in different yeah. parts of the world and that people can't identify with. So I think that's been something that's endeared your writing to people. Mm. I, th I think people do mm. genuinely love to read also about uh, a, an area of their country that, that they know. Yes. I mean, you know, I get, I get uh, uh, some, some beaut uh, um, feedback coming in from, from uh, uh, long distance drivers, from truck drivers, from uh, grey nomads, uh, who are, yeah, uh, yeah, and I mean, they're openly admitting, I'm a grey nomad, you know, yes. you know, which is really great. And Spending and the kids' inheritance. <laughs> way to go, Spend. way to go. Um, and, uh, yeah, and, and they're, you know, they're, they're, they're driving up through those wonderful remote places mm -hmm. and they're reading about the places they're driving through or, or mm. staying in, and I think people like that. I think so, mm. and as you say now, with people travelling more within their own country, <coughs> mm. they're also identifying with it. Mm. Now, your next book was Flood Tide, but the one I really wanted to talk about before we move on to Tiger Men is Maralinga. Mm. Now, you were saying when you wrote Maralinga that um, you, your husband and yourself went there and, mm. and, and went around the area, but you felt like it became almost an expose. Explain a little bit about that. Well, would you believe there is the first this just arrived. I haven't even told Brucey about this. Um, I'm just directing that to Shannon, my, my publicist, who's, who's, we talk a lot and she hears me talk about my husband. But I actually, I haven't told anybody about this, just the other day, just before I came out on tour, I received a, uh, an email from the uh, uh, nuclear, Maralinga Nuclear Veterans Association uh, asking me to go to the first ever, uh, oh, what would you call it? I mean, you know, you can't really call it an anniversary can you memorial or you know something like that? um no anyway look it's a it's it's a get together okay actually at maralinga and it's a three-day event fest where all of these all of these well those remaining um are getting together to you know and i was invited along oh wow which i i consider an amazing honor and guess what it's the 12th 13th 14th just at the end of the book tour so, meant so to I be. can't go. No, oh, I can't, can't go. go. Oh, I'll be in. I'll be in Perth. Oh. Um, but I did. I immediately yes. wrote back and said, "I am so honoured." Mm -hmm. I mean, you know, because I am. A, I'm a writer of fiction, and and yet I do think, I do actually think, no, I don't think. I know mm. um, that it opened a lot of eyes, Maralinga, and mm. and there is a whistleblowing um, element to the book. Uh, I'm. I mean, frankly, uh, I'm not actually. Um, publishing anything new because I would never have been able to write that book or discover the facts that I did had it not been for the uh, McClellan uh, Royal Commission uh, in 84 and the findings were published in 85. But I mean, not very many general Pe people, a general yeah. public, went out to read mm. those findings. Only, you know, mm. uh, so there have been books written about the the clean-up about Maralinga, the, uh, uh, what, it, what it was and things like that. But as far as a work of fiction goes, I, don't, I think I'm it. Mm. Um, so I did feel a bit responsible about, A, getting the facts right, but you can't get the facts right uh, because nobody knows the facts and nobody's telling it. Mm. Uh, the whole of Maralinga, which is, as I'm sure most of you would know of the name, it, it's, uh, it is the, uh, the nuclear testing ground which the British set up following uh, the Second World War. Um, here South in Australia. South Australia. Yeah. yeah. Um, yes, they also blew bombs up at Montebello, etc., um, mm. off the coast of WA, which was Australian territory. 